today I want to talk to you about what a successful blog looks like and what you can kind of expect uh, you know from your own blog and this is a blog that my wife Claire runs that you know she's been running for quite a while and uh, it's constantly growing its its readers and its and its user base and I want to kind of take you through and dissect this blog a little bit with you show you some of the traffic numbers and uh, sort of explain to you how everything is done and monetized so I'm gonna to jump to my screen here this is Claire's blog and Claire's a vegan. My wife and I are both vegan. She does a lot of um, uh, of business in the vegan world. She actually owns two or has written two vegan cookbooks. So you can see here on the blog, on the left here we have content. Uh, sometimes it's videos, sometimes it's articles about travel, sometimes it's recipes. Uh, there's a variety of different things that are used. Uh, product reviews are put in here. There's a variety of different content that goes into this blog. And then on the right hand side, we have a few elements here. So the first element is the share element. And uh, I've done some tutorials already on how to put these particular items on your blog. Uh, you can put them into your blog posts, or in this case, Claire has actually added this code to her sidebar so that every page dynamically loads in a, a tweet button and a Facebook button and a stumble upon button. And these buttons will actually help you to get more traffic from people as they visit your blog. Because if they click like, your link goes up on their Facebook wall. If they click a stumble button, they're at, you're added to their stumble upon profile and the same goes with Twitter. And then the next line below here is get updates. Now this is really simple. Get email updates from us, enter your email address. You put in your email address and you click get more recipes and every time this blog is updated, Blend Tech Immune Booster Shake Recipe gets added on September 22nd. Whoever put their email address in here will automatically get sent an email. That's performed by FeedBurner. It's a free email service. Um, I'm doing another video on that at some point. And then you can see below here, we've got a why pay more for auto insurance. Uh, it's an auto insurance banner. So this is a, a sort of an easy monetization here. We've just got, you know, insurance is kind of a wide category. Now in Claire's case, Claire has two vegan cookbooks. So the majority of the people who come to this website, uh, they take one of two actions. They either join Claire's list, and sometimes they do both, they join Claire's list, or they click on one of the banners for her cookbook. And what will happen is, I'm actually going to open the tab that this goes to, this goes to the website that Claire has for her cookbook. Now this also runs on WordPress, and this is basically a sales site for her cookbook. And she has a get free recipes option that's built into this as well. Uh, it basically allows us to collect some email addresses for, from people. Um, they fill out a short questionnaire, uh, describe yourself, uh, you know, a couple of questions, and they put in their name and their email address, and they're instantly sent five free recipes from Claire's book and presented with a one-time offer to uh, purchase that book at a, at a discount. So what happens is she puts a lot of people on her mailing list, some of them end up buying the cookbook, and the ones that don't will get uh, emailed every time her website is updated. So essentially that's kind of the, the, the monetization strategy on, on, the, on the sort of simple high level. Uh, the other cool thing about Claire's blog is if you look and see who the authors are here, uh, this particular one was authored by um, Brock Picken. The second one here was written by uh, Carolyn Scott. This one was also written by Carolyn Scott. Claire actually doesn't, now this one here was written by Claire. This was a, a, a review of uh, almond milk that Claire put in. Another one by Carolyn Scott. I'm just kind of scrolling through here to see. Uh, as you can see, the majority of the content on this blog hasn't even been produced by or written by Claire. She has uh, guest bloggers that come to her blog. Now, guest blogging is a strategy that uh, I highly recommend if you're going to run a blog that you want it to be really successful. You can have other people write content for that blog and that will help you to build up the popularity of your blog. So don't think of it as a one person show. Try and figure out a way to leverage other people's uh, content to make your blog more popular, to get more readers in and to, and to keep your subscribers happy. So that's another strategy that she's uh, employed here. One more thing I'll mention. Looking at this particular post here, I'm just going to click on this. This is a review of almond fresh almond milk. And um, this isn't really necessarily a monetization strategy, but it's kind of cool if, if you know, you're doing a personal blog or you're, in, you're doing a food type of a blog. On a regular basis, I would say at least maybe once every week or every two weeks, Claire gets a contact from a food company. 
and uh, a lot of the time they're offering to pay her to do recipes or they're offering to um, uh, you know, pay her to run a contest through her website or pay, pay her to mail her email list. And in a lot of cases, they'll send us free coupons. In this case, this company sent us a bunch of free coupons for almond milk. Uh, and so we were able to go to the grocery store and pick up a whole bunch of, of, of uh, containers of almond milk and not have to pay for it. And this happens on a semi-regular basis. So that's kind of a, it's kind of a fringe benefit or a perk of having a blog like this. Um, I'm going to jump over here to Google Analytics. Now, because we're in the vegan niche, this isn't a super, super popular blog, but you can see on average, she's doing about 300 visitors every single day to her blog, and she doesn't pay for any of this traffic. It all comes from, actually, if you can see here at the traffic sources overview, this is actually a really important part of your search engine or of your, uh, your Google Analytics. This is all Google Analytics, by the way. Uh, and if you look down here at the traffic sources overview, the majority, 73.30% of her traffic comes from search engines. And that's really important because search engines provide us with free traffic. So if we go to traffic sources here and we take a look, now this is just for the last week. 15.55% um, is what we call direct traffic. So this is people coming in from their bookmarks or maybe from an email. 9.78 comes from other referring sites. And there's that number again, 73.30% from search engines. And you can see Google has sent us 1,500 uh, visitors. Uh, the Direct has sent us 364. Bing, which is another search engine, 92 visitors. Even Yahoo is a contender here, 64. And then we see StumbleUpon, 27 visits from StumbleUpon. And then over here, you can actually see the keywords that she ranks for. So Claire's in the top 10 for vegan. That helps a lot. She's number one for vegan cooking, and she's on the top 10 for vegan recipes and a number of other terms. In fact, if we click on view full report here, you get a breakdown, you can see that actually over 461 keywords were used to drive traffic to Claire's site. And I love Google Analytics for this because you can actually see when people search for the word vegan, they spend an average of one minute and 34 seconds on the website. But when they search for vegan recipe, they spend an average of two minutes and 10 seconds. Uh, when they search for actual domain name, they spend an average of five minutes on the site. These are some cool numbers to kind of look at. And you can drill down, I mean, we can look at 100 results at a time here if we want to, and we can see all the different terms that people use. This is what we call long tail when we get down to the bottom here, and we see people are searching for, you know, vegan spinach lasagna, you know, if we were to do that search in Google, she might not even be, oh, there she is, number three for vegan spinach lasagna. That's provided a, a couple of visits this week, um, vegan mushroom pasta sauce. Again, these are the kinds of long tail terms. She's number three there as well. So you can see that uh, vegan glazed donut recipe, these were delicious. <laughs> I'm going to click on this. Um, where is she here? I just want to see where she shows up. This is just to give you an idea of how it works. So she's a little bit, little bit lower down on the list here, but it just kind of gives you an idea of where all the traffic comes from. And this is a good example of a blog that is loaded with content. You know, if, if we go back here, Claire has hundreds and hundreds of posts on her blog. A lot of them are recipes. If we go to the recipes section alone, there are a ton of different recipes in different categories. And so each one of these starts to create what we call long tail search traffic. And so the more content you put up on your blog, the more pages Google will index and the more traffic Google and other search engines and social sites will start to send you. So, um, Keep an eye on this blog. It's constantly you know, in development. There's always new things happening to it and uh, it's always growing as yours should be. But think about what are you gonna sell on your blog? What are you gonna promote? Obviously, this is a blog for vegans. Upselling a vegan cookbook makes a whole lot of sense. And in fact, uh, she drives a lot of her cookbook sales through these two banners, through these two buttons in the sidebar on her website. So um, you know, think about what you're gonna sell on your blog. Don't just put up random ads. Google AdSense works well but it's actually a lot better if you have an ad that matches your content and even better if you're the author of your blog, if you have an ad for something that you've also written uh, that's sort of a premium upsell, you're gonna do extremely well. And last thing I wanna mention is don't forget to put an email box of some kind, some type of email collection box on your website to make sure that you're building that email list all the time.